welcome to our very first episode of I Am Fun Size 2.0, our very first interview of the year. I'm very excited about it. And it is going to be a very, very special one because <laughs> we are bringing back a very, very dear guest, someone that I love and cherish so much, Chloe Hollings, actress, published author, and general all-around badass. So... Kalomi, how are you? I'm good. How and we, are you? I'm I'm fantastic, and I'm extra excited because oh, and of course we have you know Charlie the best dog. Um, Charlie is clearly excited to see his his Chloe. <laughs> she's she's gonna have to pet him the whole time. Um, I'm extra excited because we are recording this on your birthday, yes, which we is are. so fun. I know. Um, we have known each other now for. Seven years? No, six 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 years. Two thousand seven. Well, I guess two thousand sixteen. So yeah, oh seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. Because sixteen yeah. was when the game came out. Um, and uh, in addition to playing Widowmaker in Overwatch, mm-hmm. you are an extraordinary writer and an extraordinary friend. And we got a chance to talk on I Am Fun Size back in 2017. Yes, yes, so yes, yes, the first time we met. The first time we met. And the reason that we did that was because <laughs> your beautiful book, Fuck Les Régimes, which mm-hmm. means fuck diets for anyone who does not speak French, um, which is many of us, so understandable, um, <laughs> that was... That book, we wanted to talk about that book back then, had originally only been published in French. Yes. But uh, now we have, oh, look at this. We have Show and Tell. That is, I love that. It was the French one, but that's the the French one. It's all all in the past now. Um, But now you are doing a wonderful thing. You have translated the book into English Mm -hmm. and you are publishing it chapter by chapter on Substack. Yes, I am. Um, so what inspired you to do it that way instead of seeking out a, a traditional publisher here in the States? Well, I've it's been on my mind for a while. Obviously, English is my mother tongue. I mean, one of my two mother tongues. And so I really wanted it to exist in English. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out the traditional routes are saturated <laughs> uh complicated mm-hmm. uh, i don't necessarily have like the the bandwidth to um you know to i, I to like find the right people etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. after a while because my first book but i mean the book came out s- six years ago in france <laughs> and i realized that this year on the birthday on the anniversary of it coming out and i thought okay this is getting ridiculous i need to accept that I'm this is not my like priority not in the sense that getting it out in English isn't a priority in the sense that hunting going for the publisher the agent that this the mm-hmm. that is obviously like I have so many other things going on and it hasn't been my my energy hasn't been there and suddenly I was like but I do want it to be out. I do. A few of my friends had read it in English, you included, mm-hmm. and had really liked it. And at some point, I just wanted people to be able to access it. Mm. And I had this, I, I was aware of this thing called Substack, like somewhere in the back of my mind. I didn't really know what it was or how it worked. But I thought, what if I just like put it out one chapter per week in the form of a newsletter? People can the book is mainly made of small chapters. So I thought that could work. And yeah, so I started like getting information about it and like what was it all about? And I just got super excited, not only by the fact that I could actually, yes, publish the book in that through that medium, but also publish a bunch of other stuff as Mm. well and like kind of create a whole world for myself as a writer in the English language, which is not something that I've done yet. And that's how the the journey got started. I love so much about this. I don't even know where to begin because there are three specific things that I want to address here. First of all, I love the fact that the thing... One of the things that I know to be true about you is that you are a person who somehow manages to bend the universe to your will... Just by, oh, this is what, this is, I, I want this thing to happen, but I'm just going <laughs> to wait for the right time for it, and it's going to happen. And it's, and I have seen amazing miracles happen, or what other people would call miracles, I just call Chloe's life. <laughs> amazing things happen in your life at the exact right time. And so it makes such perfect sense that you found this medium the way you did, not by chasing, but by mm. attracting it, by bringing it into your life, and by learning about it the way that you did. That is very true. And, um... 
Well, first, let's tell people, anyone who hasn't already seen the, the first episode or read the book, yes. let's talk about the book itself. Yes. So, Great. fuck le regime. Fuck diets. Fuck diets. Fuck diets, guys. <laughs> fuck <laughs> diets. <laughs> fuck them. Yeah. Completely. There are going to be so many, I'm going to say fuck so many times during this. It's going to be yeah. so satisfying. It's going to be so satisfying that I have to say fuck in this episode so many times. I'm really happy about that. I yes. also don't know if we're going to bleep it out, but I don't think so. Nope, that's not that's not We're the fun size way. Here. The fun size way is to say fuck whenever you fucking want the to. The fuck size the way. Fuck, yeah, the fuck <laughs> size way. <laughs> but uh, tell us about how you decided. Well, tell us about your journey first right. of all that you talk about in the book because it's pretty exceptional. Well, my journey is. I mean, the older I get, so I'm 35 today, um, and the older I get, and the the actually the. I don't know if I can say this, but I will. The more impressed I am that mm. all this came about when I was such a baby. Mm-hmm. I was 22 when I had like I was hit by an epiphany. Uh, I don't know where it came from, but as someone who had always like kind of obsessed, um, not in a clinical way, like but had obsessed with um, her weight. I was obsessed with my weight, with being thin always like never thin enough kind Mm -hmm, of thing mm -hmm. so I was always dieting I was and if I wasn't dieting I was thinking about it and I was like counting calories and like trying to work out and then losing a a little bit of weight and then putting it back on and then feeling terrible for it and then going back on another diet but I was kind of like in a a desperate kind of you know Mm -hmm. the energy was not it was not peaceful. <laughs> it was not peaceful at all. And it was also like so much of my worth was wrapped up in the numbers that appeared on my scales, which made me completely addicted to a certain type of number. I was very rigid. Like it, it wasn't like there was a lot of space for me to um, move, you know, um, in that area. So I was like, yeah, um, how, how would you say it? Uh, uh, um uh, vicious cycle yeah like a, a chronic dieter or something mm-hmm. okay. like i don't know how you want to put it but um and then one day at 22 i was like i had previously lost a whole bunch of weight and then came to the point as per usual where i was slowly but surely putting it all back on and i just went like these things don't work like diets don't fucking work. And what am why am I putting myself through all of this again and again and again and again? And why do I always believe that I'm the problem? Mm. Like I'm doing all the things and I'm doing them seriously and um earnestly and I'm I'm and I'm not treating myself very well on the way, yeah. which is a weird thing to to think about when you're like you're always saying that you're doing it for you, you know? You're always <laughs> like, yes, I want to lose a few pounds, but it's not society. It's just, it's for me. Yes, but in the meantime, every time I see myself in a mirror, I'm calling myself an elephant okay. and I'm calling myself names. And I'm treating myself in a way that I wouldn't even treat a stranger, like, yeah. to be honest. And I do think that so many people, men and women both, uh, actually, I think so many people... And uh, I know I certainly did when I was when I was much younger and I, I battled eating disorders. I bet all sorts of stuff. But the mindset was very punitive mm. that you had to work out to not get fat. Of course. Or to not like to, if you were finally where, where you wanted to be, then you had to work out. to. It was very much like a hamster wheel, literally like yeah. a hamster wheel. Only it was the stairs to nowhere yeah. at the gym. And that sense that in honor of doing something that was ostensibly good for your body, you were beating yourself up to make that happen. And that, for me, I think that is the part that makes it, that if if you have that part, if you're doing it punitively, that's what makes it impossible to sustain. And that's what makes it toxic. Yeah. Because there is something to be said about having a healthy diet. Yes. Right? And there is something to be said. But here's the thing. When I started thinking about it, I was like, am I doing this out of love mm-hmm. for myself? Or am I doing this out of fear that if I don't do this, then I'm worthless? Yeah. And the latter was true. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, it really was. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there was only this tiny little 
moment rare where I could be satisfied. That was another thing. Like, I I believe that as living beings, you know, we should be we should be able to fluctuate yeah. the way life fluctuates. Right, in and waves. W- yes, and uh, w- we can give ourselves that permission. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so all of this kind of hit me. And it was it was tough because I still needed to be thin. Like, it's not like I had this epiphany and I was like, oh, cool. But I was like, I think I'm just going to, you know, like, I'm out, kind of. I'm going to stop this and I'm going to see what happens if I just um, love myself the way I am. And I was like, maybe if I do that, maybe I actually will lose a little bit of weight. Mm -hmm. That was, I think, my hope. And I think it still was kind of another strategy in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But because I was aware at that point, the diets did not work. That was the big one. The big one was like, okay, I've done this now, what, 10 times, 12 times, you know, 100 times. I lose it, it comes back. I lose it, it comes back. Um, is my whole life going to be this way? Mm. So just stop. I stopped and immediately I was so happy. Like I found uh-huh. my freedom again and I was like eating and not like counting calories or anything and not controlling myself and controlling my body and controlling my mind because it's a lot of mind right. control um, that we impose on ourselves. And very rapidly I put like, I put on, I don't know, about 50 pounds <laughs> in like three months, which was literally at that point, it sounds shallow, but it was my biggest nightmare. It was what I had been avoiding that whole time. Um, But in the midst of that, I was able to like figure myself out, figure out what eating meant to me, what thinness meant to me, what being fat meant to me, how I wanted other people to to look at me, why I wanted them to look at Mm -hmm. me this way, what I was actually afraid of. Mm -hmm. Was it the men that I was trying to seduce or the women that I was trying to reassure because I think there is something in our society where we also like keep our, each other in line each like a woman keeps another woman in line by following the rules mm. I don't know whether you know whose rules but whatever society's rules okay and so there is a lot of judgment going on you know between women as well and I realized that that scared me maybe more so than the men's gaze were you was that something that you experienced in your own friend group or did you feel that that judgment was coming from women at large like my beautician uh you know my hairdresser not necessarily the people closest to you because those are always the people more often than i mean i I know you to be a pretty good judge of character so Mm. i suspect all of your very close friends were like you're beautiful no matter what we want you to be happy and healthy well yes and no because i wasn't talking about this Right, I feel course, like, uh, of course. and maybe it was because the times were different and maybe because my, I was at a younger age, mm-hmm. but also just because it's so widespread and so normal yeah. that no one ever, I didn't tell people that I, that I, it was like, you know, the fish in water, you know, doesn't yeah. see the water as, as like, of course you need to be thin. Wow. You know, I'm a young woman. I'm a young actress. Uh, thin is better. So thin is just better. It, that, that's hmm. the message that we get over and over again and so I didn't really need to explain myself if I was like you know think about it like if you're at a dinner and you're like oh no I won't take dessert because I'm I'm being careful at the moment even if you're the thinnest you've ever been no one will be like that's weird you know um it's just so accepted Mm -hmm. whereas if you say like I don't know um Let's just mm-hmm. leave it at that. Yeah. Um, but well, uh, and and also again, it all comes down to that mindset of, you know, people who are just practicing healthy eating or being careful of their sugar intake or whatever might turn down dessert. And it's it. But what but what you were struggling with was specifically that again that punitive mindset, that self worth mm. issue, that 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 tape inside your head. And I know it so well. Like I said, from from years of of dealing with it myself, and. It's not the practice that's the problem. It's where we. It's why we do it. Yeah. Right. It's why. It's why we're making those. It's decisions. It's why we do it, and it's the way we do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because yeah. my favorite story about this journey, or one of them, is the photo shoot. Oh. Can you talk a little yes. bit about the photo shoot. 
So the um, along the way, I met a woman who became one of my closest friends after that. Um, her name was Elodie. And um, she was in a journalism school and she was um, supposed to have like this project for her school. She was looking for a theme, a topic to tackle. And all the people in her class were like, you know, doing, you know, war zone topics and, you know, very journalisty stuff. And she couldn't find her topic. And one day I was telling her about my experience and like the journey that I was going, you know, on. And she said, you know what? I've just realized something about myself. I don't want to be a journalist to talk about the horrible stuff that's happening. I think I want to be a journalist to talk about the stuff that I find fascinating and amazing. And this is it. Like, could I take pictures of you as you go on this journey. Mm. And I was like, great. It was a godsend because I had a partner suddenly. I wasn't doing it by myself. I had someone to share my thoughts with because I was like reading and thinking and I don't know, trying to going into all these places. And now I had someone to talk to. Mm. I had someone um, who was also making me accountable because in the beginning there were moments where I was like, I'm putting on all this weight. I feel horrible. Like, I that's not really what I was after when I started this. Um, what if I just went on one little diet? Mm. And then I was like, I can't. Because and just that she's mindset, just, me. The way, just the way you <laughs> describe it, though, it's so interesting because, again, it's the practice that is addictive, not necessarily the thing or the substance, right? Mm. And just the way you talk about it is the yeah. way an addict would talk about yeah. it. Or just one, just, yeah, one, just, maybe just, just one drink. Maybe just I can just tiny look little bump. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's, 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 and, and the fact that diets were the thing that you had been seeking to solve the problem of yeah. your own, what was going on inside you. But it wasn't. It wasn't diets. It was thinness. Yeah. For me, it yeah. was the, the 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 substance or the yeah the addiction was the thinness. So mm. and diets were the way. Right. But um, uh, so Elodie. So Elodie. Um, yeah. So I had someone who was there for me, there with me, and there kind of watching me. Um, and it really helped because. I was, well, the first thing that helped was that she started taking pictures of me, like, in my underwear. And so, as someone who had always felt like I was too fat and too this and too that, I never really looked at my body, mm. you know? Um, if I was looking at myself in the mirror, I would, like, suck in, suck in my stomach. And I would I would play these little games, these little mind games with myself that allowed me to avoid the uncomfortable feelings that that were that would arise if I actually saw myself, which is, you know, it's always interesting because all of this is about seeing myself, mm -hmm. you know, in a certain light, in a certain way. Um, but so she would take these pictures where, of course, I was not going to suck in my stomach, like that would make no sense. And then I could just like look at myself, see myself, and it was... Because all this was a process, ultimately, of acceptance, it really did start with those pictures. Mm. Um, and it wasn't only the body, and that's where I got some surprises. Like, it wasn't about seeing only, okay, this is my body, this is me right now, and that's, and that's okay. It was also about seeing, like, this girl in this picture is so sad. Mm. Like, oh, mm. my God, I don't. I never realized how sad I was until I saw myself, you know. Oh. Um, and there were some extraordinary moments. So throughout the journey, I'd say it was like about nine months, a year that that until I actually found myself like, wow, I actually don't care anymore. So it does happen. Like <laughs> <laughs> if you take the leap, <laughs> the net does appear. Uh, it just takes a lot of like you have to want it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you have to want it really badly. But um, along the way, because I had realized that every time I looked at myself in the mirror, there was this like little voice that I wasn't even aware of that was saying really mean things to myself. I thought, okay, what if we do something different? What if I write nice words to myself? I say nice words to myself and then I write them on my body. And she was like, okay, great. I'm going to take pictures of that. It's going to be fun. 
we plan to do it this day. I, I, I bring a bunch of like lipstick and coal, you know, crayons and stuff to be able to, to write on my body. I feel like such an idiot at that moment. I'm like, oh, why are we doing this? Like, really? I don't know. Suddenly, you know, that feeling that you get sometimes when you're about to do something really important where you're like, I don't think I want to do this. Yeah, this is <laughs> stupid. <laughs> this is so stupid. Yeah. But anyway, again, she was there. She wasn't going to back down. And so I kind of like had to. So I step onto my bed and she's like getting her like little camera ready. And I take a lipstick and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to give her what she like. At this point, I'm just doing it for my peace. Like right, I, I'm just right. going to give her what she needs and then whatever. And I'm like, okay, I have a lipstick. I'll just draw a heart on my like around my navel. And so I, st and literally, Anjali, I promise, like, I start, in this state of mind, I start drawing a heart around my navel. And my whole body starts shaking with laughter. <laughs> and I start, and so I get into this, like, you know, uncontrollable laughter that lasts for probably 20 minutes as I'm going like, I love you. And this like just this huge release that I could not have faked or planned. Like I had no idea. But that gave me um, this incredible piece of information, mm -hmm. which is that the body hears us like it, it gets that information. All I had to do was to start drawing a heart and all this stuff just like emerged to mm -hmm. the surface it was insane but it was beautiful yeah. <laughs> and what's there's so many things lovely about that moment too but especially that you had decided that you were going to take this journey but it was really it was so much about it wasn't about the diets it wasn't about thinness it was about that voice mm. it was about i'm going to confront this voice yeah and i'm going to listen to the tiny voice that i haven't been listening to that's that's the one that wants me to draw this heart mm. on my belly and we talk about that all the time and i am fun size about your self talk um because it's so easy i talk about uh, you know who's who's living in your head yeah because if you have bad tenants in an apartment you're going <laughs> to evict them if they're flinging shit all over the walls, yeah. you're getting them out of there. But we have no problem letting people live rent free, even if it's our <laughs> own head, in our head and saying horrible, horrible things. And then we take them and we do it to ourselves. For real. And so I love the fact that that was the thing that unlocked it, that it was it started with the heart and then it was the language, the simple language that you that you took there. Yeah. Um, and these pictures are in the book. So uh, one of them. They're not. OK. They're, I mean, they're in the French book. Right. You can find them on online. I will okay. post them eventually, right, but right, right. for the moment, it's just the yeah. just the the right. text. I might I might throw one up. Too, <laughs> yeah. just okay. So, I don't want to spoil the rest of the book, but it's an extraordinary journey, and um and I love I, I love that it's so it's a journey into yourself. It's a journey into society. It's so uplifting, and and you know look at you now. You're you're a very happy, healthy, sportive woman who who has dealt with these voices yeah do you feel like now coming back to the book mm. is there anything that you feel like you know now that was surprising that you didn't know when you first wrote it six years ago oh uh, uh do you mean about the just journey? about just about the journey about yourself like specifically where you're like huh bringing doing this again and bringing these out again is starting to was there anything that 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 emerged what i found um Recently, well, a I I look I look at it now the book with uh, so much tenderness because again mm -hmm. I am older than I was even when I like when yeah. I wrote it I was older than I was when I lived it, which was one thing. But now I'm I'm even older and I yeah mm -hmm. I'm just kind of I'm kind of impressed yeah with mm -hmm. her and again it it doesn't even feel like me anymore so I sure. feel comfortable saying yeah. it but like I I'm like wow yes. That, that was a great thing to do. And mm -hmm. I can now really see the advantages that came out of it and the freedom that came out of it. And just, yeah, all, all the goodness that came out of that kind of very courageous leap. Mm -hmm. Because I think I have um, um, gained so much. Like, I've just reclaimed so much of, of my energy. Yeah. And I'm just so glad that yeah. over the years, so much 
of my energy didn't go to that. That. That, that I, was a big part of I it. I remember when I was in high school, my best friend told me, Anjali, if you spent half as much time and energy focusing on anything as you do on food and diets, you would rule the world. That's and a I thing. And I was like, yeah, but, blah, blah, blah. but... But that is... It's such a tremendous amount of... of of mental energy, emotional energy, spiritual energy. It's so much. And to reclaim that yeah. can be so, so, so empowering. And inevitably, at least in my experience, th- there was this great book um, called Intuitive Eating by Evelyn mm. Tribole. Tribole, I don't know how to pronounce her name. But she was this registered dietitian that was uh, very well known at the time. And so much of it was about, we're going to give you a time Take this period to just eat whatever you yes. want. Go to town, whatever you want. You can have chocolate for dinner, whatever. But the the uh, ostensibly the plan and what did happen certainly for me when I did it was that eventually your body actually craves the things it needs. Yeah. If you're listening. Yeah. But you got to listen. You got to listen to that tiny voice. And, and I just, I had the same experience, but then the amount of energy I reclaimed yeah. so that when I then went back to, I really want to get healthy. I really do want to, yeah. I want to work out. I want to experience this. Things well, went it, completely differently. Yeah, because it was about desire yes. and not fear. Exactly. And for me, that root is what makes yeah. the, the whole difference. Yeah. And in a lot of things as well. Um, yeah, certainly in career, in love, yeah. in, in so many things. So to learn that lesson so young is pretty yeah. extraordinary. Now let's talk about your substack. Let's talk about Gentle Badass, which is the perfect name for you. Um, <laughs> um, was there a specific reason you picked it or, or was uh, that, that is besides the obvious? Actually, um, Jen Cohn came up with oh, this. Of course she did. I was doing an, an interview with her for her Twitch channel like uh, two years ago. Uh, so... For people who don't know, Jen Cohn is one of our fellow Overwatch. She, yes, she uh, plays Farah on Overwatch, and she does a Twitch sh- show called Ask Bird Mom, and she does a bunch of. She's just find her on the interwebs. It's yeah. Hey, it's Jen Cohn. She's amazing. She is amazing, and so she was interviewing me, and and she was as she was introducing me, she said, "You know, like for me, Chloe, you were really like the gentle badass." Da da da, mm. and it just like slipped in, and I don't know. It, Something ticked in me. I was like, oh, I love that. Because, yes, I I've, I thought it had, like, I recognized myself in that in mm-hmm, ways. And mm-hmm. I thought that a lot of the ways that I choose to lead my life are very kind of gentle badass. Yeah. I mean, case in point, the stop dieting, I think, yeah. is quite badass. But it's also not like I'm not going to war, right. you know, against right. anything or anyone. Quite the opposite. Um, and so that that combination kind of suited me. And I remember thinking, like, maybe I'll do something with that one day. Maybe I'll maybe I'll write a book with that title. Maybe it could be something. I don't know, a podcast, whatever. Yep. And then when I had the idea of um, back to that moment, I was like, okay, I could put my book out via Substack. And then I started digging into what Substack was. And I thought, oh, this could also be an opportunity for me to start writing in English, which is something that I was afraid to do. Tell me about that. I don't feel comfortable in English. I mean, I I, I feel less comfortable in English than I do in French. Mm -hmm. Now I've been living in an English speaking country for a few years, so it helps. But I always know that there's a part of me that is kind of like, am I going to find the right word at the end of the sentence? Like, where am I going? You know, there's a lot of hesitation. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's just less fluid. Like, if I write in French, it just comes to me more naturally. And in English, I always feel like I lack vocabulary. I get idioms mixed up. Mm. And I... I, I, uh, Just for the record, Mm. I, I have to say this on camera and on mic so you can hear it regularly. You're writing is exquisite. And it's not just the book that you translated into English. It's the writing in Gentle Badass. The 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 entries that I have read so far are so touching and so specific and so evocative and I wonder if it's actually uh, it's actually helping you that you are so intentional and so concerned about finding the right word mm. because most people would probably just, you know, write write something in a in a potentially mundane way. Mm. Um, but you are so – it's so clear that you are being very, very careful to choose the words that very specifically describe 
or very specifically are the thing <laughs> that you are feeling and that you are looking for. It's 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 very very beautiful. This writing. Thank you. It's so so good. Um, um yes, I subscribe, and so should you. We're gonna <laughs> talk about how you do that in a minute. Um, let's talk about some of those entries yes. because I love. First of all, let's talk about the one that's all about saying no. Yes, I oh. love that one, and I, I I did a little newsletter that was something similar to that, but not said nearly as eloquent. And uh, and you said it, you did it in such a beautiful way. Thank you. Let's talk about that entry. Um. Well, that entry actually. Came... <laughs> okay. So, back to perfectionism because this is a theme, I guess, that has followed me throughout my life. When I was dieting, it was also out of perfectionism. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know anything but... about that. <laughs> Never. Oh, sorry, it's never I exactly a too hard. <laughs> uh, it's uh, funny because it's true. <laughs> um, yeah. So I am the type of person. I don't know if it's like astrology. I'm an Aries, but like I'm someone who gets super hyped up in the beginnings of things. Yeah. I love creating mm-hmm. something, and then when I have to like go through with it, I get a little like, uh, oh, something else I can create. Yeah, okay, that's let's a very that creator mindset, though. Yeah, yeah. I have the same thing, and I'm uh, believing Not an Aries. <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah. d- far from an Aries. I guess I'm a it's Virgo, just so. me. No, it's, it's not, that's what I'm saying. It's not just you. It's very much a creator, a creative <laughs> yeah. mindset. The follow-through is tricky. Yeah, yeah. So in the beginning, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this up stack. The book is going to come out. Great. I'm going to be able to practice my English. I'm going to be able to write stuff. Okay, once a week, I'll give... Um, a free essay and and that's going to be great and it will force me to do it because I will have decided that it's once a week and so I will have to do it whatever so I do I do the first one great and then I start working on the second one which was on my miscarriage and so as I as I'm a miscarriage that I had 15 years ago um, and so as I'm working through it I get to a point where I'm like, okay, this is good, but I feel like this is this is what I knew I would write when I sat at the table. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's a whole other layer underneath this that I need to get to. But if I want to get to that layer, I will not be on time. I, I will not be able to publish this on the day that I decided I would publish it, which was at that point like the next day. And so I hesitated, but the whole point of this was to like practice and to be proud of myself. And I mean, all of that. And so I had a, another like kind of, Chloe, A, this is your space. Yeah. Like you don't have a boss. What What are you doing? Like what is this? Again, like who invents these rules? Like mm-hmm. they're in my head. I created this rule. I created this sub stack um, and I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I'm 35. Um, <laughs> So I was like, okay, you don't need to, no one is going to like be disappointed if it doesn't come out exactly at the time that you decided it should come out. And it just got me thinking about, yeah, saying no to things, saying no to things when we know that we should say no to them and how even that is hard sometimes. So instead, I was like, okay, I'm just going to be honest with the people who are reading me, who are kind enough to read me, and I'm not going to pretend. And so I created a thread where I was like, all right, this is what's happening. I wanted this to be ready for today. It's not. That's just a fact. But let's have a conversation about saying no to things, uh, how hard that is, how tricky it can be, why it's hard, why it's tricky, why we don't allow ourselves to do it, and um, worry not. The piece will come out in just a few days, and it did. And um, the world did not break apart. Isn't it amazing? It's so weird. It's it's very rare. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I'm I'm sure it was just a a fluke. Um, uh, One of the things that I do love about you putting this on Substack, too, is that your readers have access to a community. Yeah. Your your, Your subscribers. Um, can can get in there and actually connect about the pieces that you are writing. Yeah. And so it's not just you sharing these stories out into the world and giving people this knowledge or this experience that you have, but that it opens up the conversation. Yeah. Because I do, one of the things, I know I feel this about my writing and I suspect it's the same for you too, there is a certain relief I want to provide people know, to let them know you're not alone mm. that that's my number one mission with of I am course. fun size with yeah, the book with, with all of it book. is you need to know you're not alone your 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 mission is unique 
your life, your journey is unique, but you are not alone on your journey. Mm. And that particular piece, when I read it, I thought, oh, so many people are going to read this and feel like they have permission to breathe. Mm. And I love that about it. It's another gift that you are giving people with your writing. Thank you. You just mentioned the piece about the miscarriage that you had had 15 years ago. Yeah. Could we talk about that? Yeah, of course. So what inspired you to, I mean, that's a, that's a very personal, obviously, Mm -hmm. uh, experience. What inspired you to make that one of the first things that you wrote about? Um, because it's one of because it's the idea that I had that week. Um, again, every essay is around the topic of gentle badass, mm-hmm. and um, so basically, when I'm about to start an essay, I'm like, okay, what has happened in my life that was that represents that kind of gentle badassery? Um, and fairly quickly, I knew I wanted to write about this miscarriage, not well for several reasons. But one of the reasons was because of how I finally healed from it, which Mm -hmm. to me is very gentle badass, which Mm -hmm. is that I gave my baby um, a name. And it's so simple, but it changed everything for me. Um, It made it my own and it made it something that I could carry as opposed to something that I was trying to push away. I think a lot of times we try to get out of situations or out of grief or out of, right. you know, by by pretending that it doesn't exist. Well, and also because people are, can be so awkward around you, not also. wanting to talk about it, but also, and as you mentioned specifically in this situation, um, the the perception that oh well, it wasn't a really big deal because it was so early. Yes, yes. it wasn't. A, it wasn't a big and because deal. I you didn't just... really, I didn't really want a baby at that time. And this, it's like, yeah. there's all this rationalization that kept going on in my mind as to why it should only why it shouldn't be considered right like, that a there were problem. some specific parameters that you did not meet to allow yourself the grace yes, exactly. to feel badly exactly um, and that it loops right back to well it must be about me it yes. must be my fault and there must be something wrong yes. with me and that comes from the fact that no one i mean very few women talk about their miscarriages and i could assume that it's a lot I mean, often for the same reasons that I didn't want to talk about my miscarriage, Mm -hmm. which is like, if no one talks about it, then there's probably nothing to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm probably the only one feeling this way, and that's really weird, so I'm just going to deal with it on my own, and I'm not going to bother anyone with this, because obviously no one wants to talk about it. So that was one of the reasons why I also wanted to write about it, because when I finally realized, oh, wait, this happens to everyone, and so potentially we're all, like, isolated like a few blocks away, <laughs> feeling alone, t- together, but yeah. not together. Yeah. Um, and so I definitely hope that this is something that can change because miscarriages are so common. Yeah. And when you know that they're common, then it can't just be about you. It can't. It's also just a part of nature. It's just mm-hmm. a part of the process. It's mm-hmm. just a thing that another thing that bodies do. You yeah. know, sometimes yeah. they miscarry and it's just the way it is. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I wanted to, I, yeah, I wanted to write about it and I, yeah, I wanted to, to talk about, I want to talk about the topic. I probably had still had a few things to figure out because mm-hmm. I did <laughs> writing it and I wanted people to be able to claim a way that they can soothe themselves. Sure. Um, for you gave me, them a tool. it was yeah. For me, it was giving a name, but it could be so many other things. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like permission granted to do what you need. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that goes for miscarriages, but it goes for, for everything, everything else. Yeah. I want to circle back mm-hmm. because the third essay, not in order, but the third essay happens to be about. Birthdays, yes. and I love that you and I are the same. That we, uh, I, I, we love birthdays more than we love the other holidays because birthdays are our own holidays. Mm-hmm. It's your day to celebrate being born, being yeah. alive. And that essay that you wrote about that was so mm-hmm. so. That that is it, again. I just said it this way, but you got to read her essay about it to hear it in a poetic and eloquent and beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful way. Have you always been? Have you always loved birthdays? Always. Yeah. But mine, but other people. Too yes. like the people I love. I'm like, wow, this is the day that you came to be. It's so 
awesome. Yeah, it's like, the day that you decided to be here. Yes, yes. I really, and I don't know why I believe that, and I don't know if it's true, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't need to be true. To me, it's true. Like, because um, I once told this story to a friend, and she was like, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I think we decide to be born. Like, we're in the we're in the, the, the tummy, and then something in us is just like, time to go. Go. Time to go. And I, I, that to me holds so much power yeah. in itself yeah. um, that I just choose to believe it. You know. Why well, not? I love that we get to spend your birthday with you. Yeah, it makes me so. Me talking about fun size things and yeah. gentle badasses. Yes, <laughs> what you know, that's the heart of it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like now? I know some of our viewers have probably been wanting us to talk about Overwatch this whole time, mm. so I'm going to give the people what they of want. Course. So um, when we met, we Overwatch had first started to take hold in the community and we met this huge amazing online community of artists and dreamers yeah. and creators do you feel like well have you had the experience through that time as, because you did have the book out already mm. even if it was in french are you experiencing now um an overlap where that community is coming to you and saying the very same things because i know i i'm saying this sort of as a rhetorical question because i know very much that i am fun size came out of the love that that community gave mm. to me and wanting to give something back to them them letting them know they're not alone and that even if you're feeling small you are made to live a big huge beautiful life yeah. so uh, are there any particular like particularly memorable or touching responses or is there something that you have heard from people in that community that has made you feel um yeah as soon i mean one of the major shifts in my life that comes from overwatch was the fact that it was so big but not because it was so big but because the fact that it was so big allowed me to meet the people who were playing the game the right. game hadn't been as big i wouldn't have been going to conventions and things like that and when I started meeting the people who were behind those screens and listening and enjoying what we were doing, I started to understand, number one, that we weren't that different. Yeah. We weren't that different. And I would talk about the book. It wasn't out, so no one could buy it even though they wanted to. But I realized if the book is about feeling like an outsider, Feeling like I couldn't fit in, I mean, pun intended, but <laughs> I couldn't fit in until I was, you know, this thin or until whatever. And you can just replace that with anything. Mm -hmm. The fact is, I felt like I needed something that felt like really far away, like a really far reach um, in order to be worthy of the love of others, of my own love, etc., I did find a lot of people in the community who felt exactly the same sure. way. And um, yeah, so I I was really happy, even though I wish I had had this idea earlier, <laughs> to be honest. But it takes the time it takes. That's okay. Well, and also, you're Chloe Hollings. The universe <laughs> delivers what it's going to deliver, yes. what you are supposed to have. Now it's just time. that you, you have, all, I, you more than anyone I know have trusted in universal timing. No, it's true. I, 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 we went for a walk around the reservoir that day, and we were talking about what you needed to happen. And it, it was like a week from now, you needed something to happen. And I was like, yeah, it's just going to happen in like five days. <laughs> and I know it's going to happen in five days because you're Chloe. And this is, don't worry about it. It's going to happen. I've seen proof of this. That's what's going to happen. The universe yeah. is going to deliver. Um well, I love you so, 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 so much. I love you, too. I am so grateful that Overwatch brought us together. Yes. Um, you guys can find Chloe's Substack on Substack. What is the, the URL? It's substack.com slash gentle badass. Is that how it works? We'll put it up on the thingy. Yeah, we'll put it up on the thingy because I think it's uh, gentle badass by Chloe Hollings dot substack dot com. Okay. All right. But you can just Substack. You can download the app. You can go on the website. There are several ways to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, if you look for the gentle badass or gentle badass Substack, you know wherever mm -hmm. you'll mm -hmm. you'll find it you can subscribe you can be a free subscriber and you'll get all my essays um you can be a paid subscriber and you'll get the book um and the audio versions of each essay um and maybe more access to the comment section back yeah. to what you were saying i do love that yeah, unlike so sometimes Twitter, Instagram, because the comment section is open to the paid subscribers, it yeah. is a safer space mm -hmm. um, to share and um, 
yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm very excited that you're doing it. Yay. And I love your writing so much. I can't wait to see. I, I have been eagerly anticipating every time oh, it pops into my, ma- my mailbox. I really, that really, really, really love it. The world. And you can find Chloe on the gram and on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Can you tell them where you find you? Instagram is uh, Chloe underscore Hollings and Twitter is Hollings underscore Chloe. Yep. And you can find her here, hanging out with us. Yes. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, you guys, that is this episode of I Am Fun Size. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this and you want to share it with other people, and please, this episode especially, because there's someone out there who I think you know, we know, there's definitely someone out there who could use a lot of the wisdom that Chloe shared today. Um, please tell people about it. Please subscribe. We are in the midst of uh, I Am Fun Size 2.0 here at Slap Studios LA. Slap! Um, uh, and we will have Charlie the Best Dog with us, our co-host on the reg. We have a lot of really, really fun things planned uh, going forward. So please, 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 please tell a friend, share with a friend, write in the comments section below. Um, and if you have any questions for the I Am Fun Size Siri, series or Siri, don't ask Siri because she doesn't <laughs> have the answers. If you have any questions for the I Am Fun Size series that you want to have an- answered in one of these episodes, you can email me at Anjali at I Am Fun Size dot com and last but not least if you are looking to buy the book i am fun size and so are you thoughts from a tiny human on living a giant life you can find it on amazon you can find it on barnesandnoble.com you can find the audiobook on audible and you can find autographed and un- unautographed copies on streamly.com slash anjali bamani the great thing about doing it there is that a big portion of the proceeds there go to charity right now we are sending uh funds to the underdog community project here in los angeles which provides uh pet care and veterinary care to the animals of unhoused people here in los angeles so please subscribe please buy the book please tell people thank you for watching and we will see you soon